big issue that we're dealing with is the lack of parts. It's super tough to build a race car right now. Some of the parts are anywhere from in stock, which is a blessing, to up to three months out. We're still waiting on our transmission. Luckily, a bunch of our cars run the same transmission, that G-Force four-speed, all with the same setback shifter. They fit in the Zs really well. So we actually pulled the transmission out of High Cotter's car to use as mock-up in the new car to build our trans mount and everything else. So training in, training out a couple times, you know, mod the bracket, put it back in. Had to make sure the holes line up real good, get that bushing set in there because we like to have the urethane bushing. So it takes a little bit of the vibration out. It's a little easier on the drivetrain. So we always use that little red urethane bushing. You can just pick them up off Summit. They work great. Bolt right on that transmission. Then you make your bracket to it. I'm thinking I want to do like a, a V-band there so we can clock it. The big issue with the turbos, for some reason when we we're putting them on there, the old car that we took the manifolds off of had non-stock frame rails. So it had uh, box tube frame rails that went up and around the bend because they were smashed in a couple times. I don't know, some maniac uh, crashed my car a bunch of times. I don't know who it could have been, but it certainly was uh, definitely me. Cut that, in. cut that shit off. It looks like it's like jetting inboard it anyway, is. honestly. Like the, the whole thing seems perfect. like kind of screwy. That's why that one was leaning. It's gonna fix it. <laughs> Turn rotating is gonna help that I think because we can always like open like not like high it but like open it a little bit so it like rolls mm -hmm. like this a hair too yeah ideally. which will get this away from yeah the hot zone as well to get the one turbo to fit better because we had um, a new manifold designed and built off of a jig and actually when it got welded it pulled a little bit so when it was put into the jig and weld it up completely, all that heat kind of pulls on the manifold sometimes. And it was okay on the other car. However, on this car with the factory frame rails, to make it clear the frame rails, really kind of like leaning that turbo down, and I didn't like it. I think I'd say cut on the weld, right? Uh, yeah. Because okay. then you can you can get that bevel back and yeah. use like the good material. Are you feeling that? I'm feeling like it's about time. I only ate once yesterday, so. <laughs> No, all I, I had was yesterday there. was five guys. That was it? All day? That's all I all had he all ate was five guys? Nice. <laughs> like, what if we just like get a little, cause this has to come forward. Look at this. I know, I'm, I'm So what if think. we just like bridge that gap? Just rock that thing forward and just slip a piece in there. I mean, like how square is this turbo? Like I haven't. It, it looks like maybe a little out, which is only gonna make that further. Yeah. We got. Now, one of the factory components that we do keep in the car, also as per the rules, but I also have always run the stock dash, is the dash. We got that new Z dash. It's super nice looking. So the vent design, the triple gauge pod, of course, uh, and then the overall feel through the center part of the console is is just really has that classic look and feel to it. So. This way. It's it's dragging all that. I'm not saying we're even using this. It's kind of cooler without it. Where and how we're gonna looking like cleaner version of mounting would be like whack these off. You got like a flat here that you can put something across, and then like a drop to kind of yeah prevent the flop. I mean, shoot, dude, even it. even oh. just off the cage. You know, you don't even gotta go to the transom. Just off a little yeah. tab right here. Yeah, actually, that's way cleaner. That way, you don't have some like standoffs yeah, going down be, the middle of much space. better but the screwy thing is that like this whole piece is only attached to the stereo itself so if he that piece he makes has to be the retainer for this uh trim panel we had to get in there and trim it out a little bit because we had to bump up that transmission uh, tunnel to fit our top shift G-Force. Nothing is easy, nothing bolts in, that's for certain. So we get uh, you know, to modify each and every bit about the car. And then we'll actually take the dashboard itself, flip it upside down, take the airbags out of it, take any extra wires or gauges or anything in there that we're not gonna use, and we'll actually trim all the extra plastic mounts off there to make the thing as light as possible. You know, the weight of the car is very important. Well, come on boys, grab that seat. Put a T-handle in there and Oh, yeah, dude, you gotta yeah, get the yeah. T-handle, too. <laughs> oh, shit, we're just hey. dinging up the cage now. Oh, what's your 
thumb. Right, clear is good on this one, on the twin turbo car, like, it like goes here. Yeah. Oh. You have to like go like this with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it like, there's little scratches in the handbrake and everything. Hey everybody, Chris Forsberg here with another quick hit and we wanted to show you the all new Z1 extended ball nose studs that we run in the back and front of our Nissan Z. So these are extended studs which allow you to run a little bit more spacer. They also give you more thread engagement with your lug nut and it also gives you the ball end so you have a much less opportunity to uh, cross thread that lug nut as you're putting it on, especially when you're trying to knock them on fast. For installing these, what I typically do is take a hammer, sledgehammer these old studs out. You're gonna throw them away anyway, so if you maul up the end, awesome it's all good you have access to a press this is the best way to do it just grab yourself a socket take your extended stud this will get you a nice perfect seat without utilizing hammer sockets any sort of threads and washers to try and pull the stud through which does work when you're track side and you're in a hurry the other move is slide this baby through and you get a washer and you get a lug nut and you can ram it on there and it will pull it on anytime you put in new studs always double check your torque even if you don't take the wheels off these things can seat in a little bit better and you're going to lose that torque so Give me extra torque. That thing is still compact for being the big bottle, which is pretty cool. Right and true. Mm -hmm. Simple. Right there, right? Yeah. Okay. No, basically. <laughs> you gotta decide where the battery is going and stick to it. Just grab a, um, grab a height measurement off the back car to see how much we took off and see if there's any room above the diff to bring it down. Yeah. yeah get some good shots of this thing because they're hooking it up. They're hooking it down? Yeah, they're hooking it down. What brand is this one? Lifeline. Lifeline. Corner to corner? Exactly. That looks big. God. Or it's exactly the same, you doo doo. Is it? What play you be doing? Arts and crafts. It's my favorite part of the day is arts and crafts. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the best way to like trace this guy. To like transfer. Is this where you put an ECU? No, this is gonna like bulkhead in the uh, oil dry sump tank and the power steering pump. And so the way they did it on Alex's car is a little different. Our dash bar is slightly higher also, I think. Mm -hmm. But they just went like straight across all this stuff down in here. Uh, but like we're trying to not do that because we want to use this plate, this plate, and this plate as access points to like fill stuff in there. So I'm gonna go like the window sill like up here. Mm -hmm. You know, so the piece will sit in there like this, right? And go up to there. Inch higher up on that side. So there's time there. Very yeah, way weight. cutting into our Modelo time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. What's this? What? <laughs> this looks much nicer than I was expecting. Huh? Looks much nicer than what I was expecting. Frame row is really kind of like leaning that turbo down and I didn't like it. So we actually had to go in, cut the turbo off the manifold, get another little extension that we would cut a little wedge into and then we re-hung the turbo, or propped I should say, re-propped the turbo up so it's nice and parallel between the two, left and right, because symmetry is everything, super important. And it's just aesthetics, right? It's not really that crucial. It's not like it's an exact performance advantage. It's more so just uh, to look very aesthetically pleasing. So got them all nice and uh, level, paralleled, added that little wedge in there, and Taylor welded it in, and now we got a pair of matching manifolds. For us this time, look at that. Shift knob or shift uh, stalk lights. I didn't order those though. Oh. <laughs> and this guy. What is this? It's a boot. Oh, we're booted up. Booted up. They were zooted in the boot. It's required by Formula Drift. 
Time to go, it's still hot, baby. This thing. Yeah, when I did, um, I like, I, I ripped it online. Like I took like, on that thing. Yeah. Like a little whack without. Is it gonna be a light fan or? Hmm. No, <clears throat> there won't be any window here because this is gonna be the fuel fill coming out here. Oh. Kind of like laid down a little bit, sort of pocket. It's gonna go even further back as the thing goes down because it's like, mm -hmm. it's like yeah, yeah, that will work. Oh yeah, that's fine right there. Okay. This is just a return, right? It doesn't have to be the high point. Um, it does need to be at a certain height. One of the other cool little race car parts that we get is this little filter. It's a little billet filter. It's called an Oberg. It's just, I guess, the guy who designed it, Mr. Oberg. So, but it's a reusable metal screen filter that goes between the engine, or well, the dry sump, I should say, it goes between the dry sump pump on the engine and the dry sump tank itself. So it's kind of like a pre-filter to collect any of the garbage that might be getting spit out of the pump as it goes into the tank. Uh, yeah, no, I'm saying that right. Yeah, I'm saying that right. Just making sure, yeah. Because uh, yeah, through the Oberg and into the top of the dry sump to keep that tank clean, and then it sucks out of the bottom of the tank back into the front side of the pump, and that's what generates the pressure to go into the engine. And so from there, we'll go through our k and got a whole pile of them, through our k and paper filter, and that's like the super, super small micron uh, paper filter that eliminates any debris going into the engine. So there's a lot of plumbing, especially with a dry sump system, but the daily kit's really nice because that pump integrates right into the actual uh, pan itself. Whereas one like this, this was my old V8 car one. This one, you gotta make all those lines and fit all those up to the pump um, or to the pan, I'm sorry. These four lines is a four stage dry sump pump going right into that pan. And see, then you got the return and the aerator off the back. And what's cool about the aerator is that basically Eh, stay. So the big one is the return and the small one is the aerator. Basically any of the uh, aeration that gets uh, built up, kind of like the foam, the whatever, from generating all that pressure gets spit back into the top of the actual tank. And so you have the return coming about one third down from the top and then the aerator coming down from the very top and it shoots down into the middle. The return comes in at an angle and kind of generates that little cyclone that kind of cleans the oil and gives you that nice non-frothy pickup at the bottom. Like here. You can look at it on this car. It is towards the top, it, it can't just be. It needs to feed above the oil line. That's the problem. It can't just feed into the side. Cause like if that was the case, they would just put the all the fittings down at the bottom. You know, but it's like a proper like surge tank, like proper fuel return. Right. Like all that type of stuff. It's the returns on the high side. Yeah, the little aerator one just kind of shoots towards the middle and then the return, you know, comes in, um, yeah. you know, at an angle yeah. and gets the swirl going. Oh, wait, we'll save some good stuff for oh, yeah. Ooh, wait! Look at that. Oh. <laughs> I'll do something! Should have been a hole. <laughs> Just try Stop it. pretending like you know where that thing is gonna be. I know. <laughs> but that wraps it up for today because we got uh, a lot done. I'm pretty pumped with the you know amount of effort that we got done today. Bit of fabrication and getting it to be exactly the way we want it to be. We're not really cutting any corners, even though we have very little time to get this car done. We want to make sure it's done right.